When I was reading the gospel this morning, I was thinking about the little things in my life that keep me from God, the little iotas, those little things that I choose not to do in my, to address in my own heart. I want during today's Holy Mass for you to begin to think about are those little aggravations, little aggressions in your heart that you hold on to, that you don't let go of, those little slights that you receive or judgments against you that you make to others that you are not willing to surrender and put before the Lord. As I celebrate the Mass today, I encourage you, I invite you, look at the little things that keep you from being free and put those on the altar so that the Holy Spirit can bring them to God the Father and replace them, not with little things, but, the great, but with the graces of God the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come together today on this Wednesday. Let us call to mind our sins, the times we've offended the Lord. Ask for his forgiveness and his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Ahab sent to all the children of Israel and had the prophets assemble on Mount Carmel. Elijah appealed to all the people and said, how long will you straddle this issue? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. The people, however, did not answer him. So Elijah said to the people, I am the only surviving prophet of the Lord, and there are 450 prophets of Baal. Give us two young bulls. Let them choose one, cut it into pieces, and place it on the wood, but start no fire. I shall prepare the other and place it on the wood, but shall start no fire. You shall call on your gods, and I will call on the Lord. The Lord who answers with fire is God. All the people answered, agreed. Elijah then said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one young bull and prepare it first, for there are more of you. Call upon your gods, but do not start the fire. Taking the young bull that was turned over to them, they prepared it and called on Baal from morning to noon, saying, Answer us, Baal. But there was no sound and no one answering. And they hopped around the altar they had prepared. When it was at noon, Elijah taunted them, Call louder. For he is a God and may be meditating, or may have retired, or may be on a journey. Perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. They called out louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until blood gushed over them. Noon passed, and they remained in a prophetic state until the time for offering sacrifice. But there was not a sound. No one answered. No one was listening. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. When the people had done so, he prepared. He repaired the altar of the Lord that they had destroyed. He took twelve stones, 
for the number of tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord had said, your name shall be Israel. He built an honor in honor of the Lord with the stones and made a trench around the altar, large enough for two measures of grain. When he had arranged the wood, he cut up the young bull and laid it on the wood. Fill four jars with water, he said, and pour it over the burnt offering and over the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he said, and they did it a third time. The water flowed around the altar and the trench was filled with water. At the time for offering sacrifice, the prophet Elijah came forward and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things by your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me that this people may know that you, Lord, are God and that you have brought, for, brought them back to their senses. The Lord's fire came down and consumed the burnt offering, wood, stones, and dust, and it lapped up the water in the trench. Seeing this, all the people fell prostrate and said, The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The word of the Lord. Our response, keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. They multiply their sorrows who court other gods. Blood libations to them I will not pour out, nor will I take their names upon my lips. O Lord, my allotted portion and cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. You will show me the path of life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. May the words of the Lord be in my heart, on my lips, and may worthy and joyfully proclaim this holy gospel in the name of the Father, Son. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, Whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But, ever, but whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Whenever I would take a test as a little boy I, and even a young man and even as a college kid, yeah, maybe even as a seminarian, I was just known for missing the small things. The small things like turning over the next page and seeing three more questions. The small thing of like putting my name on the paper. I find it kind of funny because there are many times in our lives that I think we so easily dismiss the small things. The small things that God is putting before us and how to grow in holiness and, and to follow him more profoundly. Over the last week, I've been praying about all the small things that I need to look at in my life, the way I hear people, the way I see people, the way I speak to people, all of those little ways that I fail to demonstrate that love of Christ, even as yesterday's gospel spoke about. The gospel, if you remember, was, I am the light of the world, or you must be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, like letting that grace, that light come out. What are the small things that you and I do that we have to look a little deeper in our hearts to understand what fear lies underneath that, what anxiety is there. Many of us, when we hear the smallest part of the letter, the smallest uh, letter, we think, oh yeah, I, I must do this. I must be the one that works on this, and it's true. But even sometimes just overcoming that denial, that fear that is there that says, there is something blocking, and what is that? you will begin to understand the movement of the Holy Spirit to actually move very powerfully, very gently, but very clearly in your life. And it'll help you understand really, how is God asking me 
to fulfill his law in my vocation or in the experiences that I'm going through in sickness or in your life and your financial worries. All of those little things, the little things that can weigh on us. I remember one time I was working with a couple and they were having financial troubles. And part of it was because of the little things they were doing. One of them was going out to lunch on a regular basis and one of them needed a fancy coffee. But the point is, once they began to chop the little things, address the little things, all of those bigger things, the bigger financial worries went away. I want you to pray about that. Look in your life and examine what are the little things that you're just in denial about, refusing to address, and let the Holy Spirit come into your heart to address those so that you can really grow, more, grow closer to Christ and you can understand his great call that we are all called to be saints in the mystery of his kingdom of heaven. For the church and all who serve in the church, that we may be witnesses of your grace and mercy, Lord, we pray to the Lord. Holy Spirit, inspire and guide all elected officials to work to bring peace, equality, God's love to one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless all of those struggling with addictions, those struggling with temptations, that you keep them safe, that the little choices that they will make each day will help them to be free, men and women, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we lift up to you the idea of peace, peace in hearts and homes, peace in streets, that there will be a communion among all God's people, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, for our loved ones, for our friends, for their eternal rest in the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, hear our prayers and those in our hearts. We ask them through your Son, Jesus, through Mary's intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth is given, and human hands are made. Now become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbles himself to share in our own humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contract heart may be accepted by you, our Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Lord, wash me, that my iniquities cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, Lord, look kindly upon our service, we pray, that what we offer may be, acceptable, may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. So with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed Apostle St. Andrew, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a beautiful day, folks. I'm still working on the adoration for the weekend. Still waiting to see if we have the mass, um, you know, uh, even though it's Wednesday, I haven't heard what the next phase is. So let's pray. I'd really like to bring people together uh, this weekend for Corpus Christi and gather us to pray around the Blessed Sacrament. Anyway, keep your eyes peeled. Maybe tomorrow I'll have some more information. <laughs>